Hello, everybody. Crimson Buddhist here. So this is podcast number two. Joining me today, we have. Hi. My name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my name <laughs> is Alex. Uh, they'll call me Bogan. It's uh, extr 3 miss slash Tamic and various things. I'm also the guy who got bleeped a whole bunch last episode. Man, your intro takes forever. You have like 20 names. You have to spell them all. All right. Okay. Uh, Aaron. One, two. Uh, Crimson Vigil. Elite Marine. Elite Marine from a YouTube one, name. One, 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 three. Something. Adam isn't joining us today because he's a douche. He took a shift at his work. <laughs> Why do you have to do that? I'm going to have to fucking listen to this. I hate you. Uh, he took a, a shift. We are going to Holiday World in like, what, a few hours. Which is an amusement park. To some, to some viewers who don't know what Holiday World is, obviously like, it's a world of holidays. Home. It's a yeah. theme park. Yeah. Full of themes. Yeah. It's pretty good though. Yeah, for Indiana. All right, who's who has the first topic? We'll start with you, Brock. Well, I'll give you guys a choice. Don't look at the screen. Nobody look at the screen. You're still looking at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can either tell a story or um, discuss something. So you guys pick. Okay, question though. <coughs> what does like what type of story? It can be any story. My like story. Comical. Oh, yeah, it could be do- kind of funny. We're doing sto- storytelling. Just random. Yeah. I have a lot of stories. Yeah, I, I tell stories all the time. Let's, let's, let's let Alex tell us a story. Okay, what? Tell us a story. What kind of thing? What's pick one? Pick okay. Pick the funniest one you can pick up. The funniest story? God damn! <sighs> There's a lot of them. I've heard. I of. I know. I I honestly can't pick. Pick uh, something that's funny then. Super I'm trying funny. to think. Pick the one with the naked Chinese fire drill. Oh, okay. All right, that works. Um, all right. So um, I was on wrestling in high school and um. We were uh, road tripping up to a state a wrestling state tournament in Indianapolis, and um, it was, so it was like a bunch of like teenage guys. And uh, on the way up, we had uh, this one guy who was really crazy, and we just kept doing Chinese fire drills like every stoplight. And um, at one of the stoplights, he just decides that he's just gonna start stripping in the middle of the road. So he like j- runs out of the car, strips off his shirt, just starts waving it around, dashes into the other car, jumps in there, takes off his pants in the other car, comes back out, starts <laughs> running around in the street naked. Um, I like how he says that naked, <laughs> naked. <laughs> naked. There's like people like taking photos of him. There's some black guy that looked like he was about to shit his pants. It's pretty <laughs> funny actually. But. uh... Then he jumps into our car, and then we get pissed because he's naked and he's sitting in my car, so then we hit him a few times. And the next stop that he runs oh, back right. over to the other car to get his pants and what, was this like in the city or is it just this like was like road, this yeah. was like on like um this was like just outside of Indianapolis. There was a Where lot of cars. Cr- there was a <laughs> lot of cars. <laughs> like it was like uh three or four in the afternoon, so it's like that traffic jam. Oh my god. Oh my yep. god. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's he looking. He had to like car, run. Like, be- he had like right. run between <laughs> cars to be able to get to us. So like he had to, like he like probably hit his dick on like another car or something. <laughs> he probably has herpes after that day. Uh, uh, it maybe. was pretty good. The same, we had this, uh, one guy, he has, like, a, um, he was born with, like, a birth defect in his arm, so he has, like, a short arm with not as many fingers, and, uh, he gets, he doesn't, he doesn't have much luck with the ladies, let's put it that way, and, uh, like, a little bit after this, he's driving, and he has a tom-tom giving him directions. He gets distracted by the tom-tom lady whenever she's talking during a uh, turn, because he thinks her voice is sexy, and wrecks right into the middle of a pillar <laughs> like we're just watching him and he's just like taking the turn he just rides right up on the little ramp thing like the divider in the center just rides right on up and then turns off and like fucks up his tire so then he, he just and we're like we're like peter what the fuck happened and he's like he's like oh the tom tom's lady voice is sexy it distracted me <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys were like okay <laughs> we were like the fuck <laughs> for all you out there if you're ever on a road trip be careful with the tom tom lady she's a dangerous one she's also a whore possibly she sells herself out to so many people <laughs> it's just everyone turn right here <laughs> oh whoa, that's whoa. right keep going <laughs> keep going <laughs> that feels so good I mean you're going in the right direction <laughs> <laughs> please come home <laughs> I don't know if I have a funny story. I have a a story in which I get hurt. Okay. So, 
Let's, let's, tell, let's just tell a story then. Okay. Yeah. Are you thinking of your story? Yes. Okay. Are you, you already have the balls yes. deep one? <laughs> you do the balls deep one? Yes. Okay. I can tell that story. That's funny. But are you going to tell that one? Okay, let's explain the balls deep thing real quick. All right. For people to understand. So, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this phrase, balls deep, because I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. Anyway. What happened was, uh, we were talking at an Xbox Live party, it was me and Aaron, and then one of our friends, Matt, and uh, some chick named Lady Wolf, and um, what happened was, Matt's joining the army, he's telling all of us about it, and all this stuff that's going to happen, and how he's going to have to like do all this workout, and you know go through boot camp, and then he just stops in the middle of his story, and thinks for a second, and then he's like, oh, well, as uh, Aaron and Brock would say, I'm going balls deep. Then we we just he we just sit there for a second and we're like Matt where the fuck did you get that we we have never said that phrase in our life you just made that up I guess he I, I thought he just wanted to talk about balls for some reason I had no idea what was going on and then immediately after we said that we just like call him out on it and he just goes oh well never mind and then he continues telling his story like it didn't happen we're just like what the fuck are you talking about and then Lady Wolf is just like what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty good. But uh, now we just say balls deep all the time. Yeah. Everything is balls deep. For this podcast, yeah. we're going to go balls deep on the podcast. We are. It's yeah. so good. All right. What is your story? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. A couple years ago, I, th- I believe I told this one to Alex. I don't think you've heard it before. But a couple years ago, um, we went down to Florida Keys with my family. And we went, one day, we woke up and we went to like this little, like, jank shack of a breakfast. Jank shack. It was is like, it like a Waffle House? Kind of, but it was like... I'm scared to go. I've never been in a wall house in my life because I'm just too afraid of it. It's fucking ghetto, dude. Perfect honesty. Well, it was almost like a wall house, except like it was a, like a, like one of those home businesses, which is like it's not really a franchise. It's just like... Yeah, it's just like a <laughs> local thing, I a guess. A local thing, a yeah. A local shitty thing. Well, well, no, like their food was good and everything. I went in. But the place was ghetto. But The place was so ghetto. Oh, my God. It's ghetto out the ass. But, like... It got really bad because I, like, their sh- their food gave me the shits. And, like, I had to go to the bathroom in the back. And, like, what it is is, like, you go in the back and there's, like, a hallway. And passing, going down this hallway, you pass the kitchen to get to the bathroom. And so. Wait, you pass it like you go in it? Or no, like, just, like, there's like you go down this hallway and there's just, like, an open way to the kitchen oh, right by the bathroom. Nice. So you open up this bathroom and it's just, like, it's like an outhouse. Like that's the, like the like as big as it is. Like think about going into like one of those oh, portable God. porta potties. I can't. I can't go in those. Man. Well, it was so small, and I'm a okay. I'm six four, six three, six four, and that thing is like tiny for me. Like the roof was really low. I swear it was like a shack. And well, I closed it, and the knob of the door fell off. <laughs> <laughs> On your side. On my side, and, and it locked. <laughs> and, like, I didn't want to crap because I felt uncomfortable, and I didn't know what to do. I had no cell phone reception in the bathroom. Um, like, I was you back there. start banging on the door? Yeah, I did. And then finally Adam came back. My brother came back there, and that's Adam. And um, he's like, is anybody there? <laughs> and, like, I wasn't thinking for a second. I didn't respond, and he just walked away. And... <laughs> <laughs> you were just like I was just oh, I was I'm out of it. I don't know why. And well, and then about thirty minutes later, he comes back and goes, "Aaron, are you in there?" And I'm like, "Save me!" <laughs> like I've, I've been back here for forty minutes now. Like I've been holding you my could, crap. Why did you say something? I don't know. I, I spaced out. <laughs> well, why, why did you? Can you not put the handle back on? No, it was broken. Like straight oh, up okay. broken. All right. Well, could they not hear your yells in the kitchen? No, yell. you were just well, like this is no, embarrassing. Okay, well, sit here. <laughs> basically, no, I, my, me and my brother were talking to the door, and my brother just started laughing his ass off in this little hallway, and almost like fucking fell on the floor. But he gets my dad, and dad's like, "I'm gonna have to break this door down." But he doesn't know that if he breaks the door down, he'll be crushing me essentially, because that's how small the bathroom is. Okay, at this point, are, do you still have your? Did you pull your pants down at all? So no, I, I never even got the pants off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That well, would be hilarious. Well, <laughs> the end of the story is he shits his pants <laughs> in the car. <laughs> I almost did at the end of this. Um. Anyway, but like my dad tells a manager, and the manager is the ch- is the chef of the place, and the chef's also the maintenance man. <laughs> so he comes back, and he's like, "How old is the kid?" 
And my dad's like, oh, he's 18, 17, or he's 17. He's like, oh, have a knife. He throws me a knife. And he's like, okay, just try to shimmy the door open. <laughs> just, just, it, just kind of wedge it in there. So I had to shimmy my way out of their bathroom. And I get out eventually. And he proceeds to tell me, oh, I was painting that and painting and working on that door. I seem to have misplaced a screw. Nice. <laughs> so he didn't put the door together correctly. And, yeah, I just kind of sat in my car the rest of the the rest of that whole breakfast thing. Nice. Almost perceived the crap myself because my entire family is laughing at me. And, um, yeah, I would never go into that restaurant again. Nice. I get so much shit for being locked in the bathroom. Is that a pun? Hmm? Is that a pun? Almost. Uh, <laughs> almost. <laughs> uh, the worst bathroom I ever saw was at this one locker room at this high school. It was a pretty ghetto high school. And it was just, it was like there was no door. It was just, like, from the locker room, it's just an open room. Like, there's just an entrance to like walk in not a door it's just like open and there's just four toilets sitting in the room with no stalls it's just four, <laughs> it's just it's just a room with like four toilets and there's only toilet paper on the outside walls the two inside toilets don't have toilet paper <laughs> you have to ask the person next yeah. to you to pass so uh, it. <laughs> one of the teams of course decided that it was a wrestling tournament one of the teams decided they were just gonna like oh fuck it let's do it so they just had four people they just all went in there and just started shitting together, and they're like, they'd be like, bro, that's, pass me toilet paper. That's, that's a I need some moment. toilet paper. Yeah. Bonding. Male that bonding. That sounds fucking terrible. It was like oh the absolute God. worst. Like, everyone was afraid to go to the bathroom. Like, everyone had to shit really bad, but no one wanted to go in just the open room where everyone could see you. <laughs> oh, my God. That, uh, we had this one guy, or like 103 pounder. Um, another team, whenever he was like in the bathroom, like shitting. They sent their heavyweight, who was like 270 pounds and like 6'5", to go in the bathroom, and he just sat next to him. Like, there's the four toilets, and he just sits next to him. So that way, he has to hand him toilet paper. Oh, that's so funny. That's messed up. Uh, we should probably stop talking about bathrooms. Yeah. You want to do that? Uh, so, part of the speedrunning community, while well, I'm getting into it, and... Uh, Pretty excited. There's a marathon coming up from May 24th to May 28th called Summer Games Done Quick, Quick 2012, run by SpeedDemosArchive.com. Uh, it's a marathon where they just have, like, literally they just do a marathon of nothing but speedrunning for those four days. They do it throughout the night. They take donations and stuff like that. Um, you can donate. Yeah, if you donate, you're in it, eligible for prizes and stuff like that. And, uh, it all goes to autism research for this, actually. And uh, I'm really excited for it and think it's really awesome. Like, what do you guys think about it? Well, it's not like one of those marathons that we watched last time, those live ones? Yeah, it's it's like all live, and it has the runners there, and they, like, explain their oh, runs. Oh, dude, that, that shit was cool. I liked it. I, I, loved, I thought it was really fun. Yeah. Uh, I particularly like love the uh, Legend of Zelda speedruns. The Legend of Zelda runs are really good. Most people who don't know about how like crazy they are are really surprised. If for some reason you're watching this and you've played Ocarina of Time, uh, if you don't know, the world record right now is like 19 minutes and 48 seconds or something like that for an any percent run. Which is freaking ridiculous, by the way. Yeah, 19 minutes to beat the entire Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. That's literally including the starting cutscene, too. Wow, that starting cutscene is like the good like five minutes right there. It's not five minutes, oh, not but, five it's, minutes. It's, but it's, it's, a, a, it's a good couple bit. minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it'd be super interesting. I guess I'd have to watch it once to, to figure it out. Do they like talk while they're yeah? Doing yeah. So they have like, like that's a, what I thought. They have like, like all the runners in the room. They have like well, not all of them, but they have a lot of the runners in the room, and everyone will like commentate. And yeah, make they have jokes. like a camera on the runners, and like they have like a camera the room, and then they have the, then they have a camera on the game. Right. And they'll, they'll like explain all their tricks and stuff like that, and they also try to explain like little funny quirks about the game. Um, some runs are better than others, obviously, yeah. but I think that that it doesn't matter exactly, like how well they do the run then. Because, like, if I think about it, whenever there's, like, a huge Call of Duty and StarCraft 2 community on yeah. uh, YouTube, and it really doesn't matter the gameplay that much if if you can talk about whatever. Like, so it really just depends on how good of a yeah. person you are, if you're really charismatic or... Yeah, a lot stuff. of them are, Gen actually. Generally, like, um, that was kind of like what I was saying about... Uh, I was talking to someone, and we were talking about how, like, in this one run they did, they made it, like, really flashy, but it's actually slower. 
he did like the slower method, but he made it really flashy. And just all, to make it interesting. Yeah, everyone was talking about how much they loved it, and he was really pissed because he was like, oh, you know, it was slow though. Like, it was really slow. Like, he could have done it way faster. And they're like, but people loved it. Like, people, yeah. it doesn't matter that it wasn't the fastest for this. He's not going for a world record time. Right. Um, but generally, the gameplay is still pretty good, which is, I mean, like, there is a few that aren't that great, but like, Portal. Yeah. I know the guy is going to be doing Portal. I like watch the oh, stream. Portal, the Portal runs crazy. I, I I watch the stream all the time. You get a donate between choosing whether or not he beats the game by going out of bounds on stages or he goes in bounds only. Um, uh, okay. There's a donation war for that, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool how they if do he that. goes in bounds, yeah, um, it's like you can choose way how, like donate, and you can choose the way they play a certain game on that in like in the future of like yeah. the list. There's like incentives to donate like prizes, but you can also like. Like, in Portal, if you donate for, um, let's say you want to watch him do inbounds only because you don't like it when people go out of bounds. So you choose, like, inbounds only, and uh, you donate, like, $30. If you donate $30, you're eligible for the grand prize, which is a Wii bundle. Uh, you get, like, a Wii, uh, two two controllers, two nunchucks, and, like, I think, like, four or five games. Um, and uh, you're eligible for that. You're eligible for the two Portal-specific uh, prizes, which is perlers of the companion cube and a perler of the portals and um you also get to have your comp you can attach a comment to your donation and it'll be read live on the stream so you, if you have like shout outs you want to throw to people you can do that and all of the money goes to cam uh, the autism research like none they don't keep any of it at all it's the fact that they're reaching out to a different type of community rather than just a, like a sports community or something yeah like they're i don't know i find it unique yeah, it's really cool. Last year, at, well, last winter at Awesome Games Done Quick 2011, they raised $146,000. That's pretty crazy. The uh, the Awesome Games Done Quick is for cancer research. How many how many games did they speed on the last um, marathon? Um, Games? I'm not entirely sure. Wasn't it like over like 120-something? Um, It was like 128 hours. Uh, oh, yeah, it was like 128 hours in total, but... Um, I'm trying, I can't remember how many because they sped run a lot of games. The the full games list is over seventy for summer games. Um, some of the big ones are like uh, Portal, Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy VIII, Doom, uh, a lot of the Mega Man's. Uh, Mega Man's. Oh my God! I can't wait to see Legend Mega of Zelda. 64. Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, Super Mario Land, Super Mario World, Super Mario sixty four. Yes. I think Super Mario sixty four is a one hundred percent run. All one twenty stars. And it's, I think it's supposed That's to... That's going to be crazy. I, I think it's supposed that. to be like, I want to say it's like an hour and a half or something like that for 120 stars. That's still right. fucking crazy. Um, still bad. There's just a like really big list of games. So whenever you guys <laughs> watch these, do you usually like intently watch how they're doing it? Are just amazed by the time? Or like, because like, whenever I watch a lot of YouTube videos, honestly, if it's something video game related, I usually just lower the video and do something else. And just listen um, to what they're saying. We're, I'm actually For like, something like this, I do. See, I watch it, but I may not be, like, that worried about yeah, how like, they're doing. Like, depending on the game, like, if it's a game I like or whatnot, like, I'll actually watch it, and, like, I'll be thoroughly into entertained by how, just how, like, amazingly fast they do. Like, I've been watching Cosmo speedrun The Wind Waker, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker a lot recently, and whenever he's doing, like, the sailing, or he's just going through, like, a dungeon doing, like, normal stuff, I usually just kind of, like, tab out and look at other things. But when he's uh doing, like, the big tricks and skips and glitches, I normally tab back in and watch those because I find those really cool. See, I, like, for the Ocarina of Time one that I watch, I'll just, I watch the whole thing is because, mainly because it's just... It's really it, cool it's to watch the first time. Yeah. The, you can't... It's not one of those things you can watch multiple over and over and over and over again. It's just, like, if you haven't seen it before, I recommend that you watch the whole thing. Because yeah. it's, it's very entertaining. Yeah. Right. At least right. once. I would. It, it kind of depends on how interested you're in the game. Like some games, I'm gonna tab out and not really pay that much attention to because I don't care about the game and I'll just listen to them. And other games, I'm gonna like watch like the whole thing. Do people like fuck up all the time? No, most of them are. Re no, most, most of them of don't them mess got up. It down. Most of them have it. Down. They do. They specialize. They train. They change their routes so they're not that like. They change them on purpose, so they still have, like, a lot of the big skips glitches, mm -hmm. but they're not, like, if it's something's too overly difficult, they just don't do it. Okay. Or, like, I speedrun Rainbow Six Vegas, and, like, they won't let me play that in a marathon because the game's just too random. Like, you just die too quick yeah. and too easily. So they wouldn't let me do that in a marathon because 
there's a chance that I'm just going to like get bad luck and just die a bunch. Right. And there's nothing I can really do about it. So they they like they pick games that are more consistent and they change their routes so that they won't they're like in less danger and they just practice them a lot. Like you have mandatory practice. You have to have video evidence of you practicing and stuff like that. And May 24th, May 28th. All right, new topic. Do you think that high school teachers middle school Maybe not middle school. High school teachers and professors should have professors in college that is should have uh, a teaching degree, or do you think that that's not necessary? Like, are you saying like, do you think it'd be more applicable like for like a math teacher to have a math degree and not a teaching degree? Like, would I'm you saying re- okay. What usually happens is if you are in the example of high school, if you're teaching, you know, whatever math level. You have to have a degree in math, and you have to have a degree in teaching. Do you think that they should have that degree in teaching, or do you think it matters if they have it? Because you you already have to have your subject area. Well, I think in high school, a lot of them, they have, like, joint programs where you just get, like, a teaching math degree. Right. So you only have to get the one, but it's still, like, a specialized thing. But in order to teach in high school, you have to have a teaching degree. Yeah. Do you think that... You also have to have a license and stuff like that. Do you that think costs that a lot of money. Do you think that that's necessary? It's kind of hard to say because it's like even with it, like you're still gonna have bad teachers, and if you get rid of it, you're still gonna have bad teachers, and you're still gonna have good teachers. Right. I think it just has a lot to do with. Okay, what I think on it is that it. I. I don't think they need it at all. I think it's just a way, you know, for universities to make even more money. Maybe I'm just cynical, but I don't know. I. It doesn't seem necessary because whenever you're teaching your subject, it just matters. You know how well you know that subject, how well you convey it to people comes with you know ex- experience yeah. of teaching over years. Um, I don't know, trying out new lesson plans. Maybe maybe have them like shadow another teacher, like a successful teacher for a while or something. They already but program some of that though. I so. know, but that that's part of your. Um, whenever you get your degree in education, you do that. But I'm saying like maybe you just you know, shadow another teacher a few times and some you get some Some people just pointers. shouldn't be teachers. They just aren't charismatic enough. They just can't convey information that well. Right, but the way we have it now, it doesn't really filter any of those people out. Yeah. It just seems like a, a waste of time to me because it doesn't seem like they would learn anything. I can see a point. It seems kind of like, I mean, I, I, don't, I guess I don't really know exactly what all they teach 100%. Like, right. So, I mean, maybe there's some, like, valuable information in there. Maybe they maybe they should just do it down to like they have the license thing now. Maybe they should just make like a class or two for the license thing. Mm-hmm. So then you can they can still convey like structuring lesson plans and stuff like yeah. that. And then as part of like your license application, maybe they assign you a teacher to watch or something like that. So you still get like the good benefits of the degree. Like you get like them you learn the important stuff, but you cut out all the fluff, like all the other stuff. And you don't waste nearly as much time. I don't really think they should, like, if you get a degree at, say, like, the example, like you said, math, if they have a degree in math, like, um, their bachelor's or their PhD or whatever, I think they should be eligible to teach that subject. But I also think they should not really be tested or regulated, just, I guess you could say, sort of like an I step type thing to make sure they know what they're talking about. Well, they they do have to pass the test. It's required. You have to have a license. Yeah. And you have to go take this test. I forgot exactly what it's called, but I have a coworker at my work who's like she just got her degree in education, but she's going like elementary education, elementary special needs. Okay. And uh, she's still like all teachers have to get a license, and you have to go take this test, and it's really expensive. It's like four hundred dollars or something like that. And uh, you if you fail it, then you just you don't you don't get your license, and you don't get to be a teacher. And I think you have to retake it every, like, two years or something like that. No, I don't know about that. I don't remember. She said you do have to get it, like, renewed, though. You can't just, like, sit on it. Right. Huh. Seems like a cheap way to get money. Yeah. That is... I can't imagine that, you know, the cost of having somebody, I guess, grade it, proctor proctor it, and printing out it, printing it out, I guess. Um, I don't think that that's going to cost anywhere near $400. So it's just... You're just trying to make money from people that, you know, or passion, are, uh, yeah, it, maybe, maybe that, you know, they really want to do that, and it's something, you know, that's going to be really beneficial to our society, and you just kind of, and like, some it. people just deny them because of the money costs. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I don't know, it just seems kind of dumb to me that you need to, to, to pass that test. 
Because it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good teacher either, or you're better than somebody that didn't pass it, I don't think. But I haven't seen the test personally, but I don't I don't see any sort of standardized test that you could set to tell if you are good at conveying information or not. Yeah, I also don't know any specifics, like if it's different for all, like depending on your subject, right. or if it's like just the same test for everyone or what. Yeah. Because like a uh, college level math professor is going to have a lot different time than a... Um, like elementary school math teacher, even like a high school. Now that I think about it, I don't even know if you need any sort of education related thing to teach to be a professor. I don't think some don't professors think do because I'm pretty sure some of them just get PhDs and whatever. Yeah. Or like even not even PhDs, like masters and they just But I guess that's also why college professors are usually more distanced. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, there's always that, like, you know, people talk about those, like, college, or those college professors who just have their grad students do everything for them. Right. Because they, a lot of times, I, like, from what I understand, they, they'll get, like, their PhD or their master's, and they just want to do, like, research and, like, academic work, and the university will, like, force them to teach to help pay off their, like, you know, yeah. they're doing the academic work, but they also want them to teach and stuff so they can get some yeah. money from that. Well, I want to take this on a slight tangent because you brought that up. Um, we'll only talk about this a little bit more because it, it might be a boring topic. But um, with okay, so I I go to Purdue University and it's uh, a research university. So I mean, you know, of course they they teach everybody and they have undergraduate programs and everything. But uh, they're they're really focused on you know doing new research and things. And every professor that is at Purdue has to also teach classes. So what do you what do you guys think about that? Because Somebody that's doing research isn't necessarily great at conveying information to others to to newer students. Uh, I don't know, but you're saving money, I guess, because you know you're having somebody do the research as well as teach. Yeah. But it's 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 just more efficient for the university. Yeah. Like you just pure, said, that's kind of like a business standpoint it, type a, deal. It's a business type thing. It's where it's, they may not be good at conveying it, like um information to students but they at least know it and they can give them they can give them information out it may yeah. not be very well or not it's just that it's for the university it's cheaper to have the two packages in one quite honestly you can look at almost everything done anywhere uh, i mean like aside from like small personal things and it's almost always money related like even like pr things like walmart does stuff like you know higher more disability people, even things like that are money related, they're business related. They do that to get positive PR to try to get more people shopping in Walmart, things like that. You know, it's even even like small things like those people are probably gonna buy Walmart products. So I mean it's all business related. Even the things that may not necessarily seem like it. Okay. I, I, I guess I somewhat agree with you guys because I mean Otherwise, you know, you'd you'd have to pay for a whole other professor. Exactly. And most of the stuff you you kind of have to learn on your own in college. Not not too much, I guess. But, but that's college. I think though. you you can learn stuff on your own. It's more readily available. That's college, though. I mean, like that kind of happens around the world. It like I don't know. I it's kind of like it's one of those. It, it could you could end up with a like terrible teacher regardless. So. Exactly. I mean, like I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily agree with them doing it, but maybe. I don't really know a good way to decide which ones do and which ones don't, because they're not going to do none of them do. Right, but you also run into the problem where the professors literally just don't care about what happens to those students. Yeah. And um, that's where you have to, like, bring that to, like, the attention of, say, like, their uppers or something. Well, right. It doesn't but, really matter that much. Yeah, it doesn't matter, because, like, you can do. They have a thing where you know teachers can be at academic probation where they can't teach or something, but then they win in that case, right? Because then they don't have to teach, which is something they didn't want to do in the in the beginning. There might be other restrictions like they aren't allowed to do some other thing. Along with the fact the general attitude in colleges is just kind of like it's up to you, and it's like if your teacher yeah. isn't that into a class and you're struggling, then find help somewhere else. Right. I mean, there are always you know supplemental things you can do to learn something, but if the teacher doesn't care, it just makes it that more that much more difficult. I was thinking about either talking about the new Elder Scrolls game or I don't know if there's that much to talk about yeah. that though. Yeah, we, we can you can speculate. Okay. Um Bethesda is coming out with a new game, as I don't know if everybody's heard or not. It's uh, basically a Elder Scrolls online uh game. 
It's um it's an Elder Scrolls MMO. An Elder Scrolls MMO, just like Alex said. And I don't really think Brock pertains to this because he does not like RPGs or MMOs, so he does not play them. But um I for one do play MMOs and RPGs, I love them. And I don't know. I believe an Elder, Elder Scroll games are meant to be single player RPGs. I don't think this game will be very good in my opinion because I don't know. It just when I, is, it, is it supposed to release soon? No. I, no, it's not time soon at all. No. No, like years off. I don't think it I don't think it's like a 2014 thing necessarily, but it's no. probably going to be like a late 2013. Yeah, okay. at the earliest. Okay. So, and I believe um Alex, you had some comments about this because you I just, looked it up. My predict, oh, it's uh, it's gonna start off pay to play and then they want to move it to a freemium style, which doesn't make sense because once you start pay to play, like how do you benefit all those people who pay to play before and then people come in with free to play? Exactly, like it doesn't make sense. Like what do, what what benefit do you give them that makes up for all that money they spent? You could you could give the you you could if I had to do that you could give me like free max level armor and shit and I would not care. I'd be mad. Different story. Like, maybe like the, said, for, maybe the first all. expansion you, that comes out. No, you can't give it to them early because then there's like, if there's not enough people that have that bonus, then, you know, the whole MMO thing, it wouldn't be very massively. It'd be... Yeah, kind of okay, small. and the other thing is, if they start off pay to play, what makes it say they're gonna not, like... They're gonna change because well, I mean, like it's like, oh, I don't, we're I making don't all this will. money. This is just rumor speculation, by yeah, the way. Yeah, this, this is just is rumors. A, this is this is an official. But they, I mean, I guess they also had the rumor that you'd have to pay for Call of Duty whenever Call yeah. of Duty Modern Warfare Three. They said that you would have to pay for that, but that was just the rumor, and it turned out it was Call of Duty Elite, which is the supplemental thing. I don't, I don't really know which style they're gonna go for, but my my prediction for the game in general is that it's going to be. Just like a fairly, I don't think they're gonna. It's gonna be that great of an MMO, like compared to like the big juggernauts of like right now. The big juggernauts, like the big ones, are Terra, Guild Wars Two, and WoW. Yeah. Um, those are the big ones, and I just don't think the big three. They're gonna live up to something like that. What? Um, what are the What are the big three? Terra, Guild Wars, and WoW. Terra's the smallest by far. Yeah, I haven't heard it. Um, it's what a, about Star it's Wars? a newer one. Star Wars is like dying massively. Right, it's, really? It's it, it, it's a it wow lost, copy. It lost like twenty five percent of its user base after three months. Yeah, it's because it's a wow copy. Did you guys play it? Uh, I didn't like play it. I didn't bother. It was, it was pay to play, and I wasn't gonna yeah. pay to play to pay an MMO. No. I promised myself wouldn't do that again. After for uh, viewers, me and Alex used to play uh, World of Warcraft, but uh, we have cleansed ourselves of that. Not saying it's a I'm bad getting, game. It's a it's a fun game. Just, I'm getting Guild Wars too. It though. really it, like it consumes your life. Yeah, I have Guild Wars 2 pre-ordered in full though. Yeah, but that won't be as time, that, won't, that won't be as consuming. Yeah, that one is designed so you can play you can play it much more casually if you please. I'm not saying it's a casual game because there is especially in the PvP front there's a lot of like hardcore content. Is Guild, I really love what they're doing with the PvP in that game, but is Guild Wars 2 gonna be paid for? No, it's free to play. Okay. Uh, you just, there's you just, a, you just have there's to pay a cash the initial, shop with like yeah. cosmetic bonuses and like quality of life bonuses, sort of like League of Legends. So you have yeah, yeah, but I mean like they'll have things like there's a thing like you can like teleport. Or you have a mobile banker and you just like use it and you put stuff in it, and just sends it back to your bank, so that way you don't have to go back to town things uh, like okay. that. Yeah. Uh, so it's like I mean like it's, a, it's it is a legitimate bonus, but it's like a quality of life. It's not necessary. Right. Just okay. saves time. And by the way, to your argument, we talked about this a little. The last podcast, right, with Bethesda and yes. how they're uh, gamer oriented. i uh, that's what my personal opinion. This seems like okay. a money oriented thing, right? Yeah. But, okay, but if you have the pay to play thing, you were saying what would what would you know have somebody stop doing pay to play? That's what I'm talking about. If they're gamer oriented, that would stop them because if they don't need that money anymore, then well, see, that's where I'm like, I'm, I mean, they've been mostly gamer oriented until like. This, but this is like the one game I've seen that is not seeming. This is it's more so early. Yeah, it's 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 too early and too much too much rumors that it's still an early development that I don't really know. To me, just this like this just screams like they're just trying to make money on Skyrim. Yeah, they're just trying to like milk the Elder Scrolls cash cow while it's really popular. Because ever since Skyrim came out, it like it was it like made so much money like first couple days, and they're just like Alex just said, they're trying to milk that name out as much as they can. And I believe 
because it's the first one that went really mainstream. I mean, Oblivion was really popular, don't get me wrong, yeah. but Oblivion didn't hit, like, the mainstream gamer. Uh, I mean, I don't think they hit, like, where, like, everyone knew it. Uh, everyone talked about Oblivion. Everyone knew the Arrow and the Knee joke shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, quite like Skyrim did. Skyrim, like, everyone has played. Everyone owns, pretty much. Exactly. Um, well, it just matters the hype that's built around it, then. Yeah. More so than what the what the game is. Do you guys read everything in the Game of Warman? Me? No. Yeah. I mean, I skim through it. I don't really read the articles 100%, but I will read parts of them. I read yeah. almost none of the articles. Yeah, I don't really read I only anything. have it because I got that GameStop yeah. Pro thing, but I only got that because I traded in a bunch of games, and it was going to give me, like, it was going to give me, like, 30 more dollars because yeah. I had, like, so much trade-in if I got the bonus percent from having the pro thing, so I just upgraded. Yeah. That's the only reason I did. Okay. Well, because most of, I get, I mean, like, what gaming news am I going to not, uh, that, am I going to find a Game Informer that I'm not going to find on, like, Reddit or, like, Slash B or, like, various other boards? I just like their wonderful opinion of everything. I don't know. I just like getting their the, wonderful paid opinion of everything. <laughs> the internet's a good thing, but I don't know. There's just something about, like, getting the Game Informer magazine just reading through it. I don't know. It's just kind of cool. Um, anyways... We could talk about Diablo 3. I think none of us are getting it. Nope. nope. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not a Diablo fan. I, yeah, just not a Diablo fan. I don't, I don't, and I didn't think, RPGs. I didn't think 2 was that good. It was just because like. we've been talking about RPGs. I don't know, I just never really got into it. It was a little before my time, though, as a gamer, really, so. We can talk about how cute milk is. Milk? Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's an interesting. Point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Milk is Brock's cat. That's so awesome. My cat's better. You throw your cat at a roof to kill flies. I okay. I try to take my uh one of my cats like is always like whenever there's bugs he always freaks out and like wants to like head at him and stuff and so there's a bug on the roof one day and uh or not on the roof it was on the ceiling and um I like. Like, holding him up by the ceiling, waiting for him to try to, like, swat at it and kill it and stuff like he normally does, but he just wouldn't do it. He just kept looking at it. But I wanted to kill the bug, so I just smashed him against the ceiling and killed the bug by squishing him. <laughs> I didn't so smash abusive. him violently. I just pushed him up against the so abusive it. with cats. He was really confused about where it went, and it was sitting on his head. <sighs> Dead. I guess I have a somewhat serious topic again. Um... What do you guys think of uh, the pseudo, you know, political activism that is occurring in our day and age now with the internet? Like, are you talking about like um, how like everyone likes to act like they're doing a yeah, big like deal, hashtag but, save the world or something? You know, for for this message to five of your friends, otherwise babies will continue to die in Africa of starvation. Right. There, I mean, there's that part, but also just like you know, the the big recent thing is the Coney 2012 thing. Yeah. What, what I don't know. What do you guys think of that? It's 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 kind of complicated because it's like with some of them it's just dumb, like just like yeah, some things but, are just fucking retarded. But, other ones are actually like trying to help. Um, the whole the whole stance of Coney, a lot of people got mad because a lot of people who actually like have gone to Africa and helped these kids and done stuff like that, they feel like you know like the other people who are just like posting it on Facebook and stuff like that, or trying to act like they're doing just as much as they are, right. and they're not. But the, uh, So they're getting mad, but at the same time, like you shouldn't be getting mad at them because at the same time they're help spreading awareness, and you want right. people aware. I think that if you are actually doing something, if you're the person that's over in Africa you know, helping out these people, if you're getting angry at somebody sitting at home that posted that the viral video on their Facebook and – thinking that they're doing something in the world if you're getting mad at that person i think that you're you're the, at the end of the day you, you're the you're the worst person in the situation i think because, they're in it for the wrong thing at that yeah, point. yeah because then you're, you're just, just like, like well, i'm the one doing something look at me you know yeah because it seems like with the big thing after uh people started uh dissing coney 2012 and you know showing all these uh exposing the um, invisible children organization and all this stuff it seemed like everybody went on this other bandwagon where it wasn't let's uh try and change something in the world too let's let's show how intelligent we are and how much we've researched and how much better we are than these other people we we need to take them down a notch saying quit quit being uh pseudo activists and you know 
thinking you're changing the world in any way because you're not, so just stop. It just, I think what made me mad the most about that whole situation was that people were taking it to a different level where they were saying, look, you guys aren't making any sort of difference, quit thinking that you are. And whether or not they were making a difference or not, to, to just take somebody down a notch for absolutely no reason, it's just, I don't know, it, it seems really dumb to me. Yeah, it's it was, it ended up becoming a giant circle jerk from all parts. If you're in the whole, like, spreading it, supporting it, like, sir, you know, like, Reddit uses a circle jerk thread to make fun of themselves. It's basically like, whenever everyone just gets in a giant hive mind and they just all post it and they all try to, like, pat each other on the back and pat themselves on the back things like that, like, all the people who are supporting it are all kind of in this one little group, and they're, they're all, like, like, if you don't post it and stuff like that, they're kind of, like, looking down on you, like, look yeah. at you not trying to be politically active and help, help save these children, and then there's all the people who are, like, realizing that posting some message on Facebook isn't really going to do anything that matters, mm -hmm. and they're... They're like, oh, look at us. Like, we're smarter than them. They're so low thinking they're doing things that matter. And both sides just were, like, so caught up in being right on their views that they just took – I don't <laughs> – they just, like, thought everyone else was lower than them, yeah. regardless of what point you were at. Right. I mean, it, it, it just turned into everybody trying to put other somebody else down so that they can be raised up. That's kind of like the whole hive mind thing that is just in general on the internet right now. Like Reddit and for actually 4chan's really bad about this too. People talk about oh 4chan's the haven to get away from hive mind. It's not really. You can go in there with a different opinion and at least people listen sometimes. But mm -hmm. like Reddit's really bad about uh, hive mind. I don't go to 9gag because fuck 9gag. But that's part of the hive mind too. What is hive mind? Like you know like a popular opinion in a group of people. Like, oh, okay. if you go on Reddit, there's, like, popular opinions, and most Redditors all agree with the same popular okay. opinion. So, so it's they, called so the it's, hive mind. Okay, so it's, like, a really narrow point of view. Yeah, you know? but it's it's kind of becoming that in general in, like, a lot of things. Okay. Like, um, if you look on, like, your Facebook friends, a majority of them are all going to kind of have, like, the same likes. Well, if, if you don't just friend fucking everyone in the world, like some people... But probably most of them are going to like similar things, and they're going to be opposed to similar things. It's just kind of like, you group yourself, I guess it's because you tend to group yourselves around like-minded people. Yeah. But it's kind of creating this thing where, where whoever the first person to speak up in that group, like, puts out a thing, like, an opinion on a new yeah. thing, everyone else just kind of bandwagons onto that opinion. Yep. Like, if there's, like, a new issue that arises, like, the first person that posts on Reddit with, like, a really good argument clever, or something clever about yeah. it, then everyone else just kind of, like, goes with that. Right. They don't think, like, about it for themselves. They just kind of jump onto that bandwagon. That's kind of yeah. what happened here. People either jumped on the Pusueto intellectual or the Pusueto activist. My personal opinion is that even if you're, like, the whole, like, activist thing, like, even if you're not donating or going over and doing stuff, at least you're helping spread awareness, so it's yeah. still a good thing. But you shouldn't be like the whole. You idea shouldn't get is, caught up in yourself because you're doing this. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That that's the part I think is fucking stupid. I mean, like it's good that they're like trying to help and like the good that they're spreading awareness. But it's the fact that people get so caught up in the fact that the oh I'm doing something good. I I'm so better than everybody uh, yeah. else. It's just like you're a fucking dick. Then it's kind of like I saw this study done where um. I'm sure this applies to more than just this group, but it was specifically done with Christians where they were like 70% more likely to do, donate to charity, whether it be like time, money, anything, if other people from their church would see them. If they if there weren't other people from their church that would see them, they're 70% less likely. Right. Then it just boils down to more social interactions than what you actually believe in. They, like a lot of people, people you do. It's just, a lot of people try to do these things to like give themselves an ego boost and make themselves look better. And they just like even if they're not even if they're not doing it to make themselves look better to other people, it makes them feel better. Like like oh yes, I donated to charity. I'm such a good person now. I don't know. Have you guys seen um? There there were a few videos for a while um about first world problems. I've ever. seen a lot of the memes. Yeah. So th this is like. A really good example of it, I think, because people are getting so pissed that everybody's posting on Facebook about this case, Coney 2012, and the, all everybody was sharing that viral video, and they're like, "God, just quit posting." That's all I see on my Facebook newsfeed. God, like they were just getting pissed because 
the only thing on their Facebook news feed was, you know, spreading awareness for something terrible in the world. Whether or not that that thing is the, the biggest issue or not, you know, to, to complain that your Facebook news feed doesn't have more interesting information Statuses. to you or <laughs> funny jokes or memes or, you know, anything like Girls that. Girls talking about how slutty they were the night before. Yeah, I mean, we need more of that too, but, <laughs> like... <laughs> To, to complain about that, I don't know, it just it, it bothers a, the hell out of me. That's a good point. It's like, okay, what do you really want to see then? Do you want to see bullshit yeah. that doesn't matter? This is why reality TV is like the top thing. Oh, my God. Top, you know, that's why fucking Jersey Shore is so fucking popular. Fuck Jersey Shore. Um, Alex, she used to watch it a whole bunch. I watched it with my girlfriend. She wanted to watch it. That's I don't care. You, you watched it. <laughs> um, girlfriend or not? I watched Sixteen like, and Pregnant with my sister. Is it's kind of like a. Does that mean anything? Yeah, it does. That, it's kind of like how like people are not. interested. Like the cool thing right now is to like not give a shit about school or like any intellectual thing yeah. at all. And it's so, like, I don't know. It just makes me worried about the future. There's a bunch of dumbasses. <laughs> 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 What I always think is that there are going to be those, you know, few really smart people that will take us further in the world. Yeah, I don't know. I think eventually they might, like, grow out of it whenever, like, they get away from, like, high school. Especially, like, high school kind of has this, like, like, you, like, everyone tries to fit in. It's very hive mindy in high school. Oh, my God. Like, you know, oh, fuck school. Yeah, I don't want to go to school. School's for stupid people. Yeah. Which is ironic, School's because for stupid people, <laughs> right? But then, like, but then again, I guess, like, once I got in college, things. I actually had like, like in high school, I never really had an interest in learning. Once I got in college, like, I actually had an interest in learning. Where like, yeah. I would rather see like articles and like news stories and stuff like that than like a funny comic. Right. I was thinking about talking about something school related, but I don't know how interesting that would be. I don't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> he always says it's too fucking hard. Do you do you think you're gonna go next semester? Uh, I can't go in fall semester. I'm already too late. So why? I can't submit anywhere. You can. No, I can't. I can only uh, only submit the Ivy t uh, through our community college here, Ivy Tech, and I was not particularly fond of it when I went there for the three days that I went. You gotta give it more than three days. You really just don't want to go. there. Deadline for USI applications is like. August tenth. I no like like uh, USI and everything are already it, over. It's like August tenth. <laughs> no, that's for Ivy Tech. I've already no, tried. No, I've already looked into it. That's USI though. I don't know. I can't comment. Okay. I did. I didn't put out my application until like June or something like that. Wait, no, I did. I put in my application earlier because I took the test earlier. I didn't get my classes registered until like June. I don't know. I don't know when the deadlines are. Do you want to go to school though? I would like to, yes, but I gotta figure out what I want to. Major in. Have you thought about it in the past year? I've thought about it, yes. Um, thought of a couple of things. Thought about. I find it hilarious that we actually kind of talk about teaching because that was one of the things I thought about doing is going for an education degree. Um, other thing is, um, I'm really interested in guns, so I wanted to do like smithing for like gunsmithing slash engineering, but math and physics are not my strong point. I I don't think you should you shouldn't. I'm not I'm not, I'm not saying I'm like not doing it because of that, but it's just like it's gonna but be hard, it's gonna be harder for me. So it's just gonna be harder for me. It just means it's work for me. Thing that frustrates me the most is because I don't know how that like you hear so much talk about like what the job market's like. Jarb. Jar. The, the job. The job jarb. market's pretty good. The job market for various things. You're like, oh, there's no jobs in this, or people are like, oh, there's yeah. lots of jobs in this. And it's really hard to figure out like which one's actually true. Right. And I guess it's very regional too. Like some places yeah. probably have a big need, and other places don't. Yeah. Like, there are some like truths, like starving art students and uh, yeah English majors. And <laughs> my personal <laughs> belief has kind of been like, you shouldn't go to university for a degree that you don't need a degree to get a job in yeah does that make sense yeah that that does make sense so like if you do something i'm trying to think of a good example like art i mean you might learn something there about art which might be pretty useful but honestly like if you don't need that degree then no. yeah you know nobody's gonna be like you don't have a degree in art i'm not taking this into our art museum like you know um 
I don't really... I don't really uh, like, anything. I would absolutely love to do something psychology-related. Yeah, same here. But, but there's no yeah. jobs in it, unless you're, like, a psychiatrist, but then you have to go to, like, pharmacy school and all that, and one, it's like... One thing that uh, I didn't think about, um, one of the people I listen to on YouTube, uh, they are currently in psychology, and what they want to do is work for a marketing firm. That's something that they're hiring a lot of, because you have to think about how to market to people so that they'll buy into it. I don't know. That's that's one thing that I you have to, think. they have to actually. I I'll have to, I mean, like I'll look into it, but I just don't know if there's really that much of a demand right. for it. Because also, it's they a really popular major for how much, how like few jobs there are in it. Plus, uh, so I'm in engineering, and one of the things that they they really stress now is like focusing on the person's gonna buy it, so that you are sort of like have that sort of a psychologist mindset where you're trying to think of the person you're selling it to. That's kind of like why I'm interested in the economy a lot because it's a lot of like, like I said, it doesn't matter what the stock's actually worth nearly as much as what people think it's worth. Yeah, it's all about like social interactions. So and what It's a lot of uh, psychology and sociology and like yeah. thinking and business interactions. Like, um, okay, like this happened, but how, how, what are people's reactions to this? Like, what yeah. are they thinking? It's sort of like, a lot of things can be explained by how somebody reacted to something. So, like, uh, the Great Depression or something, how it happened, it wasn't just that, you know, the, the price of something fell. It was that, you know, something went out of whack and then everybody People freaked, freaked out, out and took and all their money out of the bank. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of things have to do with Like, Like I said with the news thing where it's like, the news started reporting on it, people think it's a lot worse, so then people start yeah. saving money and spending less money, which means there's less money going in, and then people start cutting jobs, and there's less people with jobs, less money going in, and it's like a vicious cycle. Um, I mean, like, it, it, we were going to go into a recession regardless, don't get me wrong, but they made it, it made it worse. Yeah. And it made it faster, a lot faster. Yeah. It's fine. Do that one, I think it's... Mm-hmm. Bandwagon. Yeah, uh, I mean, like that's why I kind of like it a lot because it like I love psychology because it applies to almost everything. And human, I just love like why people think the way they think or like why they do the things they do, like just like the ideas behind it. Right? Unless they know you're trying to do that, then they just fuck. With you. Well, I mean, just in, you would like in general, I'm not gonna be like I'm gonna examine your psychology, like what you're thinking. <laughs> you gotta do that. <laughs> you know, you gotta do. Because then they're just gonna fuck with you on purpose. You just like like you like oh so and so did this and you're like kind of like looking at it and you're like huh now they probably did this because of this and this right i mean it is i mean like if you don't intimately know the person i don't mean like you have to have sex but yes if you, you don't do. if it you don't so. if you don't intimately know the person i mean oftentimes you're not going to get all of it right but you can usually get guess like a few of the good big chunks if you're like pay really if you like really pay attention to it yeah does anybody else want to talk about anything um, I believe I am done with my topics. What? How long have we been going? I don't know, 17. No. I um, don't really know what else to talk about. Brock, do you have anything? I'm trying to think. I actually had an idea earlier, but then I forgot it because we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one thing I sent you guys in the Facebook message. I never got on Facebook, so. Fuck you! I never. I fell asleep when I got home and woke yeah, up late for work. Okay. <laughs> Will this be just for me and you? I guess. Um. Well, well, what's the thing in the okay. Facebook message? There is a series hey, coming hey, out. Hey, okay. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. So, um, there's a series coming out from Freddie W. Do you know who that is on YouTube? No. Freddie Long. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, he does like a lot of video editing. Does like little short movies and stuff like that. They're, they're really cool. They're really into special effects and stuff. But anyway, um, he just came out with uh, a new series about um, video game high school. So basically it's like, you know, they have specialized high schools for different things. And in this world, uh, the big thing is video games. So there's this one really pristine high school, video game high school, that, uh, I don't know, It's it's really just like, the interactions between high school students and what they go through, but the big focus isn't sports or anything, it's video games. So, like, you have the first-person shooter people versus, you know, these other kind of people all, no. all in the same school. 
I don't know. I thought it was really like interesting. The, the Halo fans who, and the Halo and Call of Duty fans no, wearing like, like a, the hat backwards with the big glasses on and the khakis and the polo. Right. Come on, bros. Let's play some Call of Duty. They're like the jocks of the school are like uh, like people who play like games like Modern Warfare or something. And like the nerds of the school are people who play like RTSs or like StarCraft or something. Yeah. And it's like they have different clicks, but they're all video games. Just the different clicks are the different types of video games they play. Which actually, uh, it is kind of how it works. I mean, there's like fighting game people. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of overlap, yeah. but there's there's specific, especially in like competitive, in the competitive right. scene, like the fighting game people and the first person shooter people and RTS people are like massively different. Right. Like most StarCraft players, well, not, not, most of the professional StarCraft players, not the fans, but the players, like hate League. They hate League of Legends. Really? Yeah, like, In Control is one of the biggest bashers of League of Legends I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, and then a lot of the a lot of the League players, they, like, they, like, especially with StarCraft, they kind of, like, look down on them. Sure. And a lot of the League players are like, yeah, StarCraft is cool, but, you know, it's overly complicated, and it's like, you know, like, this is, like, really, really intensive. Like, you can't fuck up or you just die, and then... Right. Lost my phone. It fell out of my pocket. <laughs> um, I don't know. I thought it was a really cool series, and I think it's by a really good, like. I would just like to quote that the principal of the series is the um, guy off of Epic Meal Time with a giant red beard. As I don't know his name, but I find it epic because that guy's hilarious. Um, Harvey. Oh yeah, Harvey. That's his name. Um, I don't know. I just I think it's a really cool idea because we have so many other series that really aren't that interesting, but it's something that you know could pertain to us. Um, I don't know. I think you should watch it. They already came out with the first episode, and I think they're coming out the second one pretty soon. Uh, it's kind of like I always thought it'd be interesting to see like either like a book or like a movie or like something about kind of like these like online friendships people have now, like the people you play like Xbox Live with all the time, but you like don't actually know in person right things like that like like because it's like a different kind of like social interaction it's like it's not like i mean like it is kind of like a normal friendship like you'd consider them like really good friends like like guild mates and like mm -hmm. like mmos that are like really close things like that where it's like you don't know them and you don't interact with them in person but you're still like really close to them and you like know all the stuff about them it's like it's kind of like weird though so you don't know everything and i don't know I think that's like I think it'd be interesting to see like a good book written about that. Hmm. I agree. Oh, uh, okay. I got one. I got one actually. All right. Do you think um. Do you think the future of like TV um TV is gonna shift more towards like on demand things like kind of like Hulu like getting Hulu through your TV or do you think it's gonna stay with like the random. Kind of, like the like it's a channel with like certain shows on it and you just kind of go with it now. So you're talking about like uh, do you think like on demand's gonna overtake the just what like regular TV is now one day? Like program stuff. Yeah, like where you just choose all the time. We're gonna move to more on demand things. It might not be in the near near future, but yeah, I, I don't think, think this is like a next year, next yeah. five years even type deal. Yeah, I th but but I think. Especially yeah. TVs are even getting, like, internet, like, built into them now. So it's, like, you could just, like, go to Hulu. And it may not be Hulu. I'm just using Hulu right. as an example because it's the big thing right now. I think, yeah, we're going to definitely – because, I mean, you can even see with Netflix where they've split their service into, you know, the, the instant streaming and uh, discs. Like, even that, we're moving away from, you know, physical – copies or the pop or the popularity of steam for pc gamers right where i think just we're, digitally we're, buying we're it we're all moving to, to something internet related yeah i think I, in general moving to digital but i was just yeah. wondering specifically on like the, yeah on the, this like do you like i know a lot of people like i they don't i don't think they even realize this but a lot of people like the random shows just popping up on the channels because then they don't have to make a decision on what they're watching yeah so they can just like pull it up, and they're like, I don't know what I want to watch, and they're like, oh, the Pawn Stars is on, I guess I'll watch Pawn Stars. Yeah, well, then I think that something like, what might happen is, like, networks or websites might become popular where they, you know, introduce you to something like that, a bunch of new yeah. shows or so something. Like, um, say, I was actually thinking... Or advertising. Oh, Aaron, yeah. Say, like, you're on Hulu or something, like, you're watching a show, like, there might be, like, they might incorporate something where it's just like, oh, you know, when you get done with the show, 
yeah, they or might like have show like a your playlist small, yeah, or something. like a playlist or you're like, oh, you want to see this? Maybe it might yeah. be late. You might yeah, be interested yeah. in it. Here's something else you might like. They, they could, most of them already do that though. But uh, I'm like, thinking like in yeah, the like this thing where they play it immediately after. Oh, I was what I was kind of. I actually that's kind of like what I was thinking. I was thinking eventually what's probably gonna happen is they're gonna have like imagine if like Pandora and Hulu mixed. Where it's like oh, they yeah, take like yeah. certain things you like, and they're like, "Oh, you like this kind of show? Here's a mix." Or even like a playlist type deal where you're like put these shows in there and just air like random episodes. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I think something like that has potential to overtake, like just become like a TV service one day. But I mean, and also we more so now than before. We don't really need the the random shows to come on. Some people like that, but. Um, now with the internet, we you don't you you can see what people like. Like you you can always go to Facebook and see somebody's talking about some you know series or movie or something that just yeah. came out or has been out for a little while, or you can go to whatever Reddit or 4chan or something. Yeah. Um. And actually, I just got a question for you, just in particular, just real fast, because you actually you you watch Hulu a lot. I don't know, Brock. You do you watch? Hulu? Okay. Aaron watches Hulu a lot. Yes, I do. I okay. watch anime shows like so, Naruto and stuff. Would you say you prefer, like, um, would you say in general, like, you're not sure, you want to watch a TV show, but you're not, it's on Hulu and it's on TV. Like, in general, like, which one do you enjoy using more? Like, would you rather turn on the TV and just, like, randomly find your show on? Or, or like, let's say you know it's going to come on at a time. Would you rather just, like, wait and then get on at that time and watch the show on the TV? Or would you rather get on Hulu and just watch it? It depends. if the Because if it's, like, a new episode, it won't be on Hulu. Okay, let's say in the future, though, it is on Hulu immediately. Um, Like, just which service do you prefer using? Do you like using your TV more or do you like using Hulu more in general? I would, I for like, watching your shows. Let's, I, not, let's okay, just take okay, the time. For watching my shows, just my take, TV. Okay, I was gonna say let's just take the time out of the equation, and all that. Like, just you want to watch why, your why shows. Why do you like watching it on TV? I don't know because, like, okay, me personally, like, I use my laptop, and like speakers one aren't nearly as good. Slash, you you play your laptop through your TV and watch Hulu on your TV a lot. I, I just recently started doing that because I didn't well, know I yeah, could do that. Yeah, but we're not. Let, let's let's don't say like, oh, my laptop's bad, and that's why. No, okay, I don't know. There's just something about it that I just like. I mean, that's kind of how I. Not really how I grew up, just as how I've always done it until recently, like the kind of past couple of years. I did start watching Hulu on, um, like my shows on Hulu and everything else. Like, I just kind of came up that way, you know. I'd watch like come home every day, watch Toonami, watch like Gundam or Dragon Ball Z or whatever, just on my TV. You know, I'd wait for that specific time and I'd be right there ready to watch it. Yeah, I think that that's one thing that. TV, it's sort of like TV a kind of has a, a, cult a cultural thing that kind of was built into me. I think that's one thing that TV has that something you won't get from the internet is that well, it it's instant on the internet and that's great but um it there's something about like if you hear your favorite song on the radio than if it's on your iTunes or if you watch a TV show and it just comes on and you're like oh I love well, this show I still kind of get that same feel on like Pandora right but it I don't know okay well yeah I could see with Pandora then. And if they incorporated that. What about live streaming then? Like, what if it just goes to, like, at the same time it comes on TV, it's just live streaming on Hulu. You can just watch it on Hulu like you normally would, but it's live streaming. And, like, literally, let's just say you have the TV channel and the Hulu thing, and you could, like, watch both. I would say then it's just the same as having cable, except it's on your computer. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of what we're heading towards anyway, is, like, live streaming, like, everything. Streaming is huge now. Like, like I know, like, a lot of people have said, like, as, like watching pro StarCraft matches, they massively prefer. Uh, uh, a lot of the casters say this too. People massively prefer watching it live, like having like the even like maybe some people like having the chat room on the side. They can talk to other people that are watching right. it, or some people don't even like chatting. They just like seeing that there's other people there talking about it. Yeah. Or other people just enjoy the fact that it's live and they're like, oh, this is happening now, and it, you get that same sense, but it's like on the internet. Right. And people are, like they talk about. People massively prefer that over like, you know, these. This is like a replay. You know, this is this is this already happened and it's done, and we're just gonna cast it for you live now. Like even between that, like that's what some tournaments do is they just take like the people play the game, they send them the replay, and then they cast it live on stream, and it pretty much looks as if it's like live, but right. Um, 
But people, like, if they know it's a replay, ratings drop massively, like 40%. And it's not like this just happened once. This has happened over and over and over. There's something about the live nature. I guess people just like like knowing that they're in the loop, I guess, maybe. Yeah, it's something about – that's the one thing TV has going for, but the internet is also getting that with live streaming. If we ever get to that point, I think that, you know, cable providers will, you know, probably just not really offer – very much cable then. Like it's gonna be really, really focused on internet at that point. I, I think either there's gonna be like a lawsuit and it's gonna get banned. <laughs> yeah, I really think that like, there will be some it, sort it, of lawsuit. Cables are big business. I mean, yeah. it's either gonna like they're either gonna go for that knockout blow or they're gonna go and they're just gonna go out of business. Right. I Eventually. Cable, yeah. I mean, that's like that's a long time down the line because there's a lot of people like especially in like their 30s, 40s, 20s who don't use live streaming internet and that kind of stuff. Right. And they're going to stick with like their satellite and all that for a while. I think our generation and then the generations to come will, will definitely switch to that. Though. We're, I think it's, the TV and cable is going to be obsolete pretty soon. Not pretty soon. I'm It'll be say, obsolete I'm for say some the, people. I'm going to say in the next 20 years. I would, honestly, 20 years, yeah, 20 honestly years. TV is already like pretty obsolete for me. I just don't watch it. Yeah, I just, I don't, if there's something I want to watch, I can get a video of it on YouTube or I can pull up a live stream of it. Right. Pretty much everything important is live streamed on the internet now. I think this is something that I can definitely attest to because for the past year I've been living in my apartment at Purdue and I, I don't have cable. Like, And it's not like I was ever – there was no point in my entire year that I've lived there that I was like, I really wish I had cable to watch this TV show. Like that, there was never that time during that whole year that that came about. And even before that, I the, the cable or my cable – does that make sense? Yeah. Um, uh, in my basement at home, um, it's been broken for like I don't know. So I'm gonna say like a few months before I even went to college. So uh, I don't know. I just I've never really missed cable, and I don't really ever watch it because you can just find everything on the internet. Yeah, like I'll like I'll watch a like I watched the NFL draft recently. And I just watched it live online because they live streamed it. There's multiple ones too. You could find live streams. People were this was actually like a rebroadcast type thing where people are like watching it and just streaming through so you can see it. But you could like watch the ESPN coverage or you could watch NFL.com's coverage. You could watch like the NFL TV channel's coverage. I mean, yeah. There is there's a lot of options. And then there's only going to be more stuff of, you know. Like they they've done a lot of stuff. I think they had the Super Bowl on. Yeah, they had right? the Super Bowl. Yeah, I they, watched the Super yeah, Bowl. Online. Yeah, they they're going to have everything on there. Yeah, because it's there's too many people that yeah. use online. Like, I just prefer being on my laptop to like going to a different room and like getting off everything. And then, I think that this uh, the thing with the TV and cable is is can definitely be paralleled with uh, landlines for for phones. Like, yeah, now there are quite a few households that just don't even have a home phone because it's a waste of money because you have your cell phone that you can take anywhere anyway. So I think that it's going to be a similar situation where you can just watch anything on your laptop. So why would you keep to an extent, it's also for like casual like online users, people like the kind of people that just browse like Facebook and Twitter, where they're like, you know, like the their smartphones essentially uh, replace their computers for like Not everything most. but like typing. I mean, right. like, but for like their casual internet use, like they really don't need their computer; they just smartphone. Right. For some people, yeah, you don't you wouldn't need necessarily need cable or internet if you just have your smartphone and access to 3G or 4G. But I definitely think everything's going to switch to laptops and digital and internet related. Well, one of the big things that's going to drive digital is just cheaper and easier. I mean, like, Steam, like, is really popular because it has all these great sales all the time. Like, recently they had a Portal 2 for, like, $6. Uh, Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that's a pretty good price. You're not going to find that at GameStop. You're not going to find that on, like, even eBay, probably. Right. Um, but it's because it's digital. There's not, like, a hard copy of the disc. You don't have to worry about shipping. You don't have to worry about manufacturing it. There's just the digital right. copy. You have to wor- worry about your servers, but, I mean, like, as long as you have big enough servers to handle the load. The, the only thing you really have to worry about there, though, is um, the possibility of piracy. I think it might be... I don't know if it's easier or not, because I don't... I mean, I don't use Steam. And I'm not a computer gamer. But. Like, you mean people just stealing it from Steam? People won't steal it from Steam. They just go to, like, Pirate Bay. 
But that's that's a problem regardless of whether or not you have the digital copy. Like regardless of which one you do, that's going to be an issue. They still have CD keys and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Like uh, it'll just like whenever you download it, it'll like it'll pop up a message when you start the game. Like here's your CD key. Do you want us to put this on the uh, uh clipboard for you to copy and paste? Like all that. And okay. It's like unique ones. I mean, there and there's still security measures they can put into it. Like, look at iTunes. Have you ever tried to like play iTunes on anything but iTunes? What you, like iTunes like, music? Yeah. Have you ever yeah. tried to play iTunes music on yeah, anything you can't. else? Yeah. Because they have that. You they can do that kind of stuff too. But isn't that the the format that it's saved in though? Kind of. I mean, there's other things. They have like protections from changing the format, but you can get around it. Yeah. It's well. kind of like the problem where like there's always going to be identity theft and hacking and viruses because. Every time there's a new thing come out to stop it, they're just going to get a new way around it. Yeah. Especially since a lot of the people who work on the security also work on the hacking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have anything to talk about? Um, no, I'm good. I'm actually getting kind of tired. It's going on midnight here. You got anything, Logan? I think. Maybe. Watch Summer Games send quick, May 24th to 28th. If you give me the link, I'll put it in Speed the Speed Demos Archive. Dot com. Alright, I guess that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed Risk Podcast number two. Um, this time we didn't play Risk while talking, and I think it turned out a little bit better. So, hopefully next week we can have everybody here. And Hopefully Adam will take a shift at the last minute and be an asshole. Yeah, that was fucking dumb. All right, well, I hope everybody has a good day. See you later.